Good evening, everyone. This is Gary Bennett at Excel Me. Tonight, we're going to be talking about tracking down bugs with Xcode's analyzer tool. Uh, something that, for whatever reason, most developers overlook. And um, it's a great tool, easy to use once you kind of learn where it's at and how to use it, especially now with Xcode 4, it's changed a little bit. So tonight I want to just kind of take you through how to use it, what it can do for you, and why it's great. And I think before you compile any program to start testing, you should always run Analyzer to, um, to make sure you can track down those hard to reach bugs. So let's go and take a look at it here. This is using Xcode 4.02, but it will be like this with all, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with all the Xcode versions. <clears throat> okay, so here I have an application that's written and we'll just take a look here at the code in a second. And when I compile it, I do get a warning here, but not nothing, nothing here that we really need to focus on for the sake of this um, demonstration. When I build it, I get a warning here that I'm getting an improper pointer cast, but um, not a big deal. I don't get anything else that tells me I got some bad code in here. Memory leaks, uh, potential um, uh, logic errors, but we have this great little tool here. If we click on product, it used to be in a little bit different spot uh, with Xcode 3.2.6. If we hit product and if we go to um, analyze and it will kind of go through a compile process and it's going to throw some of these little blue arrows here where it doesn't like things. Well, we can get a little bit bigger, better sense of what it's not liking, one by reading it, but by two kind of expanding it. And we'll get some arrows here that kind of says, hey, this object was allocated, but it was never, it was never, um, released. In this case, it's been retained, and so I got a, a reference count of two. So um, I got a you know pretty significant leak there, a retain count, I should say, retain count, reference count of two. Um, also, if I go back here, kind of click down this here, and we'll go back up here. Um, I have a return value down here that it's not liking, it's saying this is undefined. And what this means is, is that my code path could go through here without temp value ever getting assigned. So it's assigned um, temp values initially um, um, declared, and then I have an if statement, if x is greater than zero, and then an else if. So if it's not greater than zero or less than zero, i.e. equal to zero temp value, it doesn't go and get assigned anywhere. So I, re I could possibly return junk, um, which isn't what I want. I probably it's saying, hey, you got some sort of logic error going on here. Um, also, if I go up here to where this warning is and click on it, let's see if I can get off that, get off that here. Uh, I set a breakpoint now. Uh, well, it's not letting me there now, probably because I got these others shown here. But it's basically, I should get a, a little um, um, blue arrow here if I could expand that and get rid of that warning. I would get a, um, uh, a notification here that I am setting a pointer equal to something. I'm setting a null pointer equal to a value, which is bad. That, that will cause um, bad side effects like a crash. And um, it's giving me that warning there as well. So I get with Analyzer, it's not just memory warnings. These are logic and memory leak issues that you could possibly see in your application. And especially right now, prior to iOS 5 and 4.2, Xcode 4.2, um, we have to keep track of all of our memory. We allocate memory, we have to release it. Well, you might be saying, Gary, if if Analyzer knows where the leaks are, why doesn't it just release them and fix it itself? Ah, that's what's coming with iOS 5 and Xcode 4.2. You don't have to do the releases anymore. It has what's called automatic reference counting. And I'll be covering that more in my classes. Um, with my students, I know everybody is under the NDA because they're all um, Apple developers and Xcode um, I, or I should say iOS 5 and Xcode 4.2, which has this, um, um, this new automatic reference counting, 
is under NDA right now, so only with my students I can go through it, and all the classes will be redone um, using Xcode 4.2 and iOS 5 for my students, and the new class series starts, uh, starts next Monday, but they're also recorded and available anytime as well for the same price. So anyway, um, do take advantage of Analyzer. It's an easy tool to use. You get it for free, which is the perfect cost, and it saves you a lot of heartache. And I think before any developer runs his application to start testing, he needs to clear all of his, um, all of his issues that Analyzer is pointing out. So with that, I'm going to open it up for Q&A for those of you that are attending live. Uh, this course, uh, or I should say these YouTube videos are also recorded and offered um, to my, uh, and offered later on for free, uh, both to my students and anyone who bought my book or wants to watch them on YouTube. And i um, like to have you anytime. They're always Wednesday at this time, 6.30 Pacific time. If you'd like to join us later on for the free webinars, just go to my website, click on free videos, and you can watch all the previous recorded uh, sessions, the free 10 minute uh, YouTube videos, or click on and register for free, and you can go ahead and watch this, um, this live as well. And then of course my paid courses are over here if you'd like to learn a little bit more in, um, about the information presented for iOS developers. Anyway, thanks for attending. I'm going to open this up for Q&A right now. I'll stop the recording and the YouTube video. And uh, those of you that are attending live, answer any questions that you have, either on my book, uh, iOS uh, development in general, or on Analyzer tonight. Thanks, everybody.